Okay, so had this grand idea today. I thought what we might try to do is try to set up a radio. So I've, I've had a lot of guys asking me questions here lately about um, setting up a 35 watt radio with their GPS unit. So I thought today what I might do is show you guys how to do that, how to set up your GPS. We'll, we'll use like an R8S. I'll plug the R8S into um, a 35 watt radio. We'll go in, we'll set up the survey style. I'll show you guys how to do all that. So um, while I am getting everything set up, I want you guys watch this. Okay, so I've got everything set up. <clears throat> I have put together the radio. Um, so on the radio, we have the uh, antenna that is running from there up to the top of our antenna. We have the power cord and also the connection to the receiver plugged into the bottom. That is plugged into the battery on the radio. Uh, you can see this connection right here where I'm running into it, that is a, a uh, electric wheelchair battery is what that is. So um, that is run up to our R8, plugged into that. So we've got everything hooked up. I've got my data collector, I've got my R12, R8S is turned on, we're ready to go. So I've got a Bluetooth the R8S to this data collector. I'm gonna set up the survey style and I'm gonna show you how it works. So first thing I'm gonna tell you is power your radio up and you've got everything on here, you're gonna use the, um, the scroll buttons to look and see where it's set at. Channel frequency says 469, 5000. You're gonna notice that there is a star beside it. That star beside it means that I've selected that, okay? So 469, 5000, if I hit the arrow key to the right, it's gonna say data protocol, trim, tra trim talk 450S. That's what I want, arrow key to the right, my radio link rate, if I don't trip over the tripod, got everything a little tight in here. Um, the radio link rate is set at 8,000. So here's a little tidbit information for you. So in 2013, January 2013, the government mandated uh, a 12 and a half kilohertz channel spacing. Now, what does that mean for us surveyors? So basically what happened is we went from a 25 kilohertz to a 12 and a half kilohertz channel spacing. When that happened, that hurt us on uh, the number of channels. Basically what they did is they split all the channels up, right? So uh, they divided them all in half. But in the process, what happened was our link rate went down. So instead of being able to run a 19,200 link rate, we're at a 9,600 or an 8,000, depending on which one you wanna run. So the problem with that is, is if you wanna run a repeater, you really need 19,200 because it's all about the, the data by the time it gets from the base uh, to the repeater, from the repeater to your rover, that amount of time can make or break you, right? So if the data gets there too late, it's useless to you. And that's what happens with the slower baud rates. I haven't had any luck with repeaters. Maybe you guys have. Um, I think the best way to set this system up is to plug it straight in rather than try to use it. I, for years, I tried to use it as a repeater, didn't feel like I got any range out of it. So um, I would transmit from this one and repeat to the radio and, um, and try to bump my signal a couple extra miles, but I just haven't had as much luck with that as I thought I would. So anyways, this is my preferred method. Just plug it in. Just plug it in, set it right here, and just, just run off of this. So I'm um, not a big radio fan anyways, as most of you know, I really kind of like cell phone better, but hey, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So we've got this set up, 469, 5000. At any time, if you want to change any of that stuff, you hit the arrow down and it's gonna walk you through the different settings. And then whatever one you want, you just hit enter, okay? So we're gonna run 469, 5000 and we're going to run a uh, 8,000 on our link rate. We're gonna set everything up right now. Okay, first thing I need to do is I need to go to settings. I've already got my job set up. So I'm gonna go to settings, 
I'm going to go to Connections, and I'm going to go to Bluetooth. So now I need to look for uh, this R8S and make it my base station. So I'm going to say Search. And since I know that R8S isn't in here, I'm going to say Configure. That's going to jump me into Windows. I'm going to say Add Bluetooth. I'm going to say Bluetooth. Now it's going to look for it. It says Unknown Device, R8S, blah, 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 283. 283 is the number I've got on there. So it just disappeared. It's actually finding my cameras right now. See if it comes back to me. There it is. Okay. It's asking me for a pin. If it ever asks you for a pin, there's a good solid chance it is four zeros. I'm going to hit connect. Ready to go. Done. I'm going to close this by hitting the X up in the right hand corner. Now it says it's there. So I can select on that. I can say pair. It's going to pair it. And then it's going to ask me where do I want to put it. So I want to connect this as a base. Accept. Okay. And my R12i 736, which should be this receiver right here, that is going to be my rover. I've already got it set up. I'm going to say accept. Okay. So I got them both Bluetooth now. Now then, what I need to do is we need to go in and set up a survey style, right? So I'm going to hit the hamburger button. I'm going to go to settings. I am going to go to survey styles. I'm going to say new. And I'm going to say RTK space ADL for the radio. It's a GNSS survey type. Hit enter and accept. So first thing I want to do is go down to base options. What kind of survey style do I want? If I want to record static data at the base, I am either going to use RTK and infill or RTK and logging. RTK and infill was designed for doing post-process kinematic. RTK and logging may be what you want just for doing uh, recording static data. So I'll say, I like RTK and infill, I'll use it. Broadcast format, CMRX. If you're using a receiver like an R8S, uh, you can broadcast CMRX. If you're using an SP80, you can't use CMRX. And that's another video coming up. So my receiver type is going to be an R8S. I'm going to say R8S internal. My height is 2.25 meters because I have it on a 2, two meter tripod up to here. From here to there is 2 point, or 0.25 meters. And we're going to go to the bottom of the antenna mount, which is the antenna reference point with the NGS, which is right there. Station index, logging interval 15 seconds. This thing has all the satellites, so I'm going to turn everything on, and I'm going to say accept. Now then, here's the meat and potatoes. This is your um, base data link, your radio. So uh, we're going to notice in here that there is no, I didn't see an ADL radio in here. That is a Pacific Crest ADL Advantage Vantage Pro. But guess what? The Trimble TDL, Trimble data link, is the same radio. So we're going to say Trimble Data Link just to make my life easier. Port we are plugged into. If you look up here at the top, we have a 1 and a 2. Looks like port 2 is our serial port. Port 1 is our limo. So if you're plugged into the serial port, you're going to be port 2. If you're plugged into the limo port, we're going to be port 1. So I'm going to say port 1. Baud rate, 38,400. What they're saying is, is that is the speed at which the data travels down this cable. Okay, that's not your over the air link rate. That is set right there, okay? So um, the speed at which we're traveling from here to there is 38.4, which is um, SOP for Trimble, okay? So parity nine, baud rate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, bandwidth limiting, we're not worried about any of that stuff. I'm gonna say accept. So rover options, I'm gonna say CMRX. I'm just gonna say RTK, I'm gonna say uh, R12i internal, my antenna height is going to be two meters. Bottom of quick release, there's my tilt, my e-bubble. Now then, uh, if I wanted to do station indexing, and what station indexing does is it identifies my base. So if I want to use station indexing, I'm going to prompt for station index, and I'm gonna say any. For what I am doing right now, I'm gonna turn that off. That can be another video. Actually, I think if you look at the video I did on the swap base, I'll put a link 
somewhere up here. Maybe you guys can find it. That swap bass thing, I've got it set up so that uh, both radios are on the same frequency. But anyways, okay, except we're over data link. We're just gonna use the receiver internal. We're gonna say accept, store, escape. Now then, I'm gonna go to measure. I am gonna go to uh, RTK ADL. I'm gonna stay start base. So if I start base, I'm gonna say point number one. I don't have any points in here, so I'm gonna say key in. I'll call it base, baser. How about we call it base? Down here to the lower left, I'm gonna say here. That gives me an autonomous position where I'm at, right? It's not a corrected position, that's autonomous. You'll need to log static data, which is what we're gonna do, and then you're going to uh, send that off to Opus, right? Or process it yourself. Store. And transmit delay, that is there again. That's in that other video I was talking about with the swap base feature, right? Okay, so we're gonna say start. So we're gonna start a base, base started. Okay, so now then, one of the things we need to look at, so now we've got this thing should be broadcasting. Yes, you can see our TX light is flashing over there. So I need to go back into settings. I need to go back into survey styles. I need to go back to RTK ADL and I need to go to Rover Data Link, okay? So now what I need to do is I need to collect, collect, connect up to this receiver and uh, tell it I'm using 469-5000. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit this icon on the screen that looks like um, an RAS. I'm gonna tap on it. I'm gonna say Rover Mode. And this is just a shortcut you can go through to get to it. Okay, it's connected and we'll say Data Link. Down here in the lower at the bottom, you're gonna see where it says Connect. It says 462-4000. We're looking for a 469-5000 right there. We want to be at 8,000 baud rate BPS. Trim Talk version 1 at 8,000 BPS. So we match our radio. I'm going to say accept. Accept. Now then, if I go to measure and I say RTK ADL and I say measure points. Get out of the radio screen. You can see we're getting radio. Waiting for information from the base. And there we go. So, since this is a R12i, we gotta wiggle this thing around a little bit. Get that IMU calculated, or calculated, calibrated. Brr, is this Monday? It feels like Monday, it's actually Sunday, but it feels like Monday. Okay, so there we are. We're connected up. Everything's rocking and rolling. Looks like we got 24 satellites between the two. We're good to go. So we're ready to start surveying. So one of the things I do want to point out is on the R8S, if you look at the power light on this R8S, um, what you're looking for is a flash like a heartbeat. So I'm logging static data. If you're not seeing that flash like a heartbeat, you're not logging static data on an R8S. On a R12, it's the down arrow on the left-hand side. If you're not, that down arrow isn't lit up, you're not recording static data. So, this is my setup. This is what I like to set up. The radio, the antenna, the steel whip, everything's working, nobody's walking on me. If they were, I'd see the, um, the RX light, which would be the receive coming in, but all you're seeing right now lit up is the red TX light, which means we're transmitting. So nobody's walking on us, that's a good sign. Everything's going good, life is great, we roll on, right? So if this is a kit that NEI puts together, it's $3,200 or something like that, I think, I'm not exactly sure, but um, it gets you the low loss cable, the steel whip antenna, uh, the radio, the cables you need. It does not come with the battery or the bag that I use. The battery that I use is an electric wheelchair battery um, you can get that at any um, battery store. And then, let me grab this out of the truck. So, what I use for power to charge this thing is I've got this thing right here. So, that bag comes with those cables that uh, I can hook up to it. And this thing right here, 
Uh, this is for charging a sealed gel cell, and it's got an adapter on it that I can use to either plug in a, what they call a boat plug, or I can plug in alligator clips. So I like using this to charge that battery up. And, uh, and what you want on a battery with the radio is you want as many amps as you can probably push through that radio, because um, that's what's going to give you your range. You got to watch out, just because it's 12 volts doesn't mean that it's got a lot of amps. So you really need a lot of amps to push that radio long distance. And what I like about that battery is it's got a lot of amps because it's made for long duration. Okay, word of advice, make sure you keep a fully charged battery in your camera as well. Otherwise the battery in your camera is gonna die. Okay, not sure how much of that you got. This is the charger that I like to use uh, to charge batteries because those are sealed gel cell batteries. So use these batteries, okay? Okay, so that's it. Um, that should be uh, everything you need to know about setting up a, um, a external ADL radio with your GPS receiver. And same thing applies whether I'm using an R10 or 12 or eight, doesn't make any difference on the base station. They all operate exactly the same. You're gonna set the survey style up the same. Well, I would recommend is that, <laughs> speaking of batteries, Make sure you have a battery in your receiver. I've had several phone calls from guys that, that are relying on power from this cable to power their receiver. They'll get away um, an hour away from the base station. And when I say an hour away, I mean, they've been running it for an hour and um, all of a sudden they lose power out working and they come back and the base is shut off. So if there is a hiccup, in the power supply to this thing going to the cable and i don't understand the physics behind it but i just know this happens put a battery in there put a battery in that receiver and you won't have that problem so guys hope you appreciate it video i've got four cameras set up <laughs> so it makes it, the editing is going to be really interesting so um as always i uh, hope you guys really got something out of this video like and subscribe. Uh, love you guys. God bless. And I'll see you guys in the next video. It's starting to mist rain and I got to get all this stuff put up.